Can someone make themselves scared of something they created, something they found inside themselves? Can it drive them to sleepless nights, to lack of personality traits that they had? Can they have trouble finding the beauty in themselves? Can someone conjure up or create a character that will follow them like something attached to them that they can't shake? There are still things that we are still left with when looking and wondering about Heath Ledger, looking into his mind of a beautiful artist that may have got lost in a role that stayed with him longer than it was supposed to. It's a curious thing to watch someone's life that encompasses other people's personalities, their traits, their egos. It almost seems like he was more than an actor because he truly was an artist. When we fall into Heath's life, it's 2007, this will be a manic year for Heath. He and his girlfriend, Michelle Williams, will split up after being together since 2004. They lived in Brooklyn and would have a daughter together. But even though they split up, Heath would have an apartment in New York where he would stay when he wasn't working. But now that Heath is single, there's many rumors and whispers that come out about his life from other relationships starting and more talks of drug use. The main thing we do see is that Heath is keeping busy as a working actor. In 2007, Heath will have his last movie come out that he will ever promote again alive. It's called I'm Not There. This will be the only movie he has in 2007 that is released. Much of his time and emotions will be wrapped up in another role that he has taken on something no one has seen yet. It's safe to say Heath had a mind that was constantly going and thinking. He had many creative thoughts and ambitions. One of his main hobbies and loves was photography. Heath was also a chess player. This is a very interesting personality trait in Heath. This says something about him, that he was patient and methodical in his craft. It can almost make one jealous of Heath's life just going after his loves of art and making something from nothing. It's no secret that Heath partakes in certain pleasures. Heath's drug use is not a very talked about element in his life, but it's known. But in 2007, it's known that Heath has been telling friends and colleagues that he has been taking multiple medications for sleep and relaxation and anxieties. The problem is, Heath does not have prescriptions to almost any of them. It's obvious that Heath is struggling with substance abuse, but at the same time, he is a huge movie star with little privacy while coming out of a long relationship and starting to date in secret again. But Heath will focus on his work. Christopher Nolan had been talking to Heath over the years about working together. Nolan would tell Heath that he wanted him in the Batman series. He wanted him a part of it, but Heath would say in the nicest way possible, and as a gentleman, that he didn't think he was right for the movie, and that he couldn't add anything. But something would move Heath to change his mind. He would contact Nolan to discuss the movie and what he thought of a character he had in mind. The two will have a dinner date and meet and discuss many different things that all come back to the same place the character of the Joker and Batman. They wanted a new look, a new feel for a villain, something that seemed real. They would look at Francis Bacon pictures and look at the darkness and frightening beauty with the characters in the pictures. Heath would use this imagery to find the scope, to find the magnitude, to find in depths of where he was trying to go with the character. When looking at these pictures, you can see the darkness, the sadness, the villain coming to life that Heath was working on in his mind. After this first meeting, Nolan would say he knew this was going to be an incredible road to go down and that Heath was extremely excited about the project and wanted to be a part of it in every way. From this point on, the Joker, the villain, will start to come alive. 
Heath will pick out clothes, characteristics, the voice, the thinking, the lack of empathy the character shows, even in his voice. When Heath is becoming the character, piece by piece, putting on the pants, putting on the shirt, the jacket, and applying the makeup to his face, each time and every time, Heath will apply the makeup himself with his bare fingers to his face. It's meant to look like war paint. He leaves it on his hands, so it's under his fingernails. His face becomes messier as he starts to film The Dark Knight as the Joker. Pictures will start to come out of Heath as the Joker. Heath will be met with much pushback from fans of Batman and many critics saying Heath does not have what it takes to pull this off. He's a hopeless romantic character in movies. He doesn't belong in Batman. This is understandable for people to say this, but Heath is not just doing a Batman movie. Heath is almost making a movie himself. It's obvious that Heath is the elephant in the room. Everyone is captivated by his character, by the look, the sound, the mannerism, the goosebumps you receive on your arms, the back of your neck. It's really the first time in film that I've ever seen a character like this so real. You don't see someone acting, you see someone just being themselves. And that's what makes this character so believable and frightening as well. It's obvious that the character Heath has made, he will not go away overnight. While Heath is filming and playing the Joker, he says that he develops insomnia worse than he's had it and will start taking sleeping pills to try to force himself to sleep. But saying as well that when he falls asleep, he's having nightmares of the character. It's waking him up at night, almost frightening him to maybe even be alone. One thing we do know is that Heath is known to have insomnia through the years. It's not new to him, but he says it's become a lot worse, more intense while filming the Joker and taking on this character's mind. Think about this from the perspective of Heath. He's literally made a new person that's crazy, empathetic to people's feelings. Sadness is his happiness and happiness is madness. There's a scene in The Dark Knight that is very telling and very captivating by Heath. The movie will find an abandoned hospital. The premise is, is that the Joker will blow up the hospital. But in the reality of making the movie, the hospital really is exploding. It's a one take, hit or miss. In this, there will be different positions where Heath is filmed. He will walk out of the hospital, press a button, and eventually, the hospital will start exploding. He will then get in a bus, sit down, and it will drive off. The interesting part with this is that Heath stays in character. There's literally a hospital blowing up right behind him. He can smell the smoke, the explosives, feel the heat, the thunderous roar. He's not scared. He's in the mind of the character that has taken over his fear. He never looks back, he just keeps going. There's many scenes like this in The Dark Knight. Almost scene after scene, Heath is captivating you. Are we watching a movie about Batman? Or are we watching a film about the most interesting villain the world has ever seen? By the end of 2007, filming has wrapped up on The Dark Knight and Heath will move on to his next project, The Imaginarium of Dr. Parnassus. Now that Heath is on his next project, Heath will not even do press for the Joker. He will talk in a handful of interviews, talking about emotions and energy while filming his character as the Joker. In some, he will go more into detail. But still, in December of 2007 and January of 2008, the film is still in the early stages of editing. But in December of 2007, Heath will be working in London filming late days with many night shoots. This is where many whispers will start to reveal themselves, where Heath is talking to colleagues about sleep depravity, insomnia, night terrors. His mind will not stop racing. On the 18th of January, Heath would have his last shooting day ever. He would return home to New York City, his apartment in Manhattan. While the production was filming elsewhere, Heath had a week off 
but when Heath arrives home, not much is known about the short time Heath is back in the city he lives in. Most of what we know is that Heath flew home and stayed in his apartment most of the time, the short three days he was alive. Heath's concoction of sleeping pills and medications he piles together at once is only known by close friends. But the last night Heath was alive, he would talk to his sister, Kate, on the phone. She said that he showed no signs of depression and there wasn't anything to hint that he might be wanting to harm himself. But that would be the last time that anyone talked to Heath that night. We really can't say what Heath did that last night in his apartment. Was he walking around, reading a book, watching a movie, looking out his window, or just lying in bed looking at the ceiling? But we can imagine that it was like most of his nights dealing with his insomnia and that he was up late into the night Heath would take his normal concoction of sleeping pills that would take his life. Around 3 p.m., Heath's massage therapist will show up, not long after, his housekeeper as well. They will find Heath in his bed, unconscious, not breathing. The massage therapist that had a friendly relationship with Heath will do something that is still not well known to the public. She will call Mary Kay Olson, who at the time was in California. Olson, who was hearing a frantic person on the other end of the phone, would become worried and panicked herself and would call her own security guard in New York City to go and check out the situation. Around 3.25, the paramedics will arrive along with police and now it's known, said, and confirmed that Heath is gone at the age of 28. Later that night, Heath will be taken from the apartment with a mob of people looking and shouting and crying, watching everything from the situation. There's no privacy. It's a sad and tragic story that we just have to fill in our stomachs, that we lost a true artist that we don't have anymore. In a weird circumstance where fate would have the last say, the role of the Joker would be taken on yet again by Heath's old friend, Joaquin Phoenix. Joaquin will portray the Joker in a little bit of a different light, but still developing an amazing character. Years apart, two friends would share a character that lived on, and still to this day, people are drawn to it. People are scared by it. People want more of it. The story of the Joker.